We're glad to have you with us. You may be seated this morning. And we're also glad to, to see you get on tonight if you're not able to be on campus with us. It's good to see you log in as well. Just a couple of quick things this morning. If you're visiting with us, if you're, if you're either here on campus visiting with us or you're visiting with us even online, you can text the word welcome to 706-356-4472 and that's just the way we can connect with you. Also, don't forget, there's a table set up in the foyer. If you go out the door to the left for Vicki Sunley and James, just some wedding gifts. You can just sit out there on the table if you have them. Also, Christmas for local foster children. You may see Ann Withrow with envelope with gift information on that. So if you're interested in that, just get with her after service. Also, there is no service Wednesday night. Just keep that in your pocket for, for Thanksgiving, spend time with family, but there will be no service Wednesday. A couple of prayer requests that we have this morning. Continue to remember Vonnie Brown. Remember Chris Little. Sarah Alexander's sister. Marilyn Chitwood's stepdad. And also continue to pray for George Mackerson. Just want to share something with you this morning that the Lord's been kind of kind of tested me with and, and I don't know, maybe maybe you're here this morning or maybe you're watching online this afternoon. But my mind goes to the to the story of Peter in Matthew chapter 14. Peter's on the boat and and he begins to see, and they see Jesus walking out on the water. And he says, don't be afraid. Take courage, for it is I. So they have this conversation. I imagine the disciples are having a conversation with one another. Of, is this really Jesus? Is, is this really him? And Peter is the one who begins to become bold. And he says, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come. And we all know the story. And he, he steps out of his boat. He begins to walk on the water. It doesn't say that he steps out and he begins to sink. It says, no, he steps out and he begins to walk. The Lord really impressed on me. The boat was his comfort zone. The boat was his secure place. But in all reality, that is just what our flesh sees. In all reality, Jesus is our safe place. But we know the story, and Peter begins to sink. And he says, I, I imagine his, his fear is, hey, I'm fixing to drown here. But Jesus reaches down, grabs him by his arm, and pulls him up. And he says, when did you begin to doubt? He began to doubt when he began to see the waves around him. When he began to see the storm brewing in the sky. That's when he began to doubt. In the middle of our storms, we don't need to doubt. We just need to continue to walk. We need to step off that boat in faith, and we need to walk. And I know that all of us this year, last year, years prior, have gone through some stuff. But Jesus is still standing there in the middle of your storm saying, I'm your refuge. I'm your safe place. Just continue to walk. Don't worry about what's going on around you. Just continue to walk toward me, and I'll lead you. Would you stay with me this morning? And as you stand, would you pray with me today? Don't let me be the only one. Jesus wants to hear you this morning too. He wants to hear your prayers. Well, we say, well, Jesus knows everything already. Yeah, but he still wants you to confess it. He still wants you to pray about it. Will you pray with me today? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you. And Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for all your blessings. Father, we thank you that you allow us to gather in your house. That we have this opportunity once again to come in and worship. We have this opportunity to enter your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. Father, you see those needs this morning for those who are sick. For those who are recovering from surgery. Father, we ask you to touch. Father, you see those who have cancer. Father, we ask you to touch them this morning, Father. Lord, we just ask you to move today. Move in this service, Lord. Let us not worry about an agenda. But, Father, let us focus on you today. Lord, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.
what we're going to do this morning. We're going to bless the Lord today, and we're going to bless one another this morning. Amen. we 
you have your Bibles this morning, if you would open them up to the book of Psalms, Psalm 136. Happy Thanksgiving week to each and every one of you. Psalm 136. says this, and beginning in verse 1, O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. O oh, give thanks to the God of gods, for his mercy endures forever. O oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endures forever. To him who alone, to him who who alone does great wonders, for his mercy endures forever. God, we just thank you and we praise you for your name, for your great wonders, for your power, for your grace. God, for you and who you are, Lord. God, we just come before you this morning. And that, God, we ask for your anointing upon your word once more. God, anoint us as we receive it. God, let us be able to be encouraged and be challenged, God. Lord, as we are reminded this morning, God, of where it is that you brought us from, God, we come today to look to you and to you alone. Encounter us through your word this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated this morning. This coming week, of course, is... Thanksgiving. How many of you have already done all of your Thanksgiving food shopping? I have not. I'm not raising my hand. I have not. We have not. But I'm just I'm wanting to see your hands. Okay. So some of you have. Uh, some of you or a lot of you have not. Uh, and so uh, how many of you just by show of hands are having turkey this year? Is anyone having turkey? Okay. Sometimes I know that we like to vary, uh, you know, change it up or want to do something other than, than turkey. Um, how many of, uh, you don't have to raise your hands for this one, but just how many of you have had a Thanksgiving turkey that was a little burnt or overcooked? <laughs> I said you didn't have to show your hands because you might be, you know, we don't want to, you know. Uh, when we have to deal with that, that's not exactly the best Thanksgiving turkey, is it? And so to encourage you, if you have to deal this Thursday with a burnt turkey, I want you to learn to have the attitude of gratitude even with a burnt turkey. Okay? Number one, make sure that you can, he can give thanks because salmonella will not be a concern with the turkey. Praise God. Because it's burnt. Second thing you can be grateful for is that everybody will all of a sudden think that your cheese, broccoli, lima bean, and green pea casserole is the bomb because they won't want the turkey. Y'all have some cra creative casseroles like that at Thanksgiving, don't you? Now, the third thankful thing is your pet will not be begging as much as usual uh, at the Thanksgiving table. The fourth thing to be thankful for is that the smoke detector needed testing anyway. And then the last thing to be thankful for is if the turkey is burnt, that just means more room for dessert. <laughs> and so when we think about all of those things, I ask the question, how thankful are we this holiday season? You know, there's so much to be focused on and that we look to and we reflect on and uh, we were uh, just acknowledging and dialoguing, Tina and I were, over the last couple of days, and, and this has been not just a stressful uh, year, and, uh, but it has been a stressful season, not just for our, uh, just the world around us, but even as we face and look at uh, the things that our local body is even facing. Um, but I want to, even in the middle of uncertainty, even in the middle of what we are uh, having to endure and we're prayer, uh, praying for, I want you to be encouraged this morning that even in the middle of need, that God is faithful. 
that God is, has, is worthy of our thanks, that God is worthy of our adoration. Uh, we have been uh, praying for uh, Chris a little, and uh, he was having a major back surgery, actually three operations in one this past Tuesday, and I want you to know that surgery was successful, and uh, the doctors are optimistic, and, and they're, they're, we're thankful that he is doing well. He is at home now. And so we give God thanks for his hand upon Chris during the surgery. And the moment, it was stressful because the surgery took longer than expected. Uh, but what the uh, doctor was able to share was that he took extra care, extra time, and that some of the other surgeons that were involved made the statement that they have never seen a doctor do as great of a job as doing the procedure as what was happening with Chris in his surgery. And so we give God thanks for that. A friend of ours that we served on staff with down in Jessup, Georgia, Mike Welburn, uh, uh, had back about six months ago, had a heart attack and was uh, in critical condition but has gone through things, recovered, and then just uh, a few weeks ago uh, was diagnosed with uh, what the doctors believe to be metastatic cancer. Yesterday, though, and of course the doctors didn't have much uh, hope, good news to share, uh, but in following up and re-examining the tests, uh, the oncologist now is saying uh, that what was apparently they thought was there before now is not there. Now, he does have cancer, but it is not metastasized. There's no lesions uh, in his, in his uh, hip or in his femur, and so the doctors now report is this is optimistic. We have things that we can do. And so we praise God that even in the middle of dire circumstances, that God shows up and says what once was there is now not there in these particular places. And so we give God thanks. Bonnie Brown, as you know, we've been praying for her. She collapsed at work the other day uh, on Friday. Um, and she had to be rushed to the Greenville Hospital. Uh, the doctors uh, diagnosed her with an aneurysm. And um, at that moment when she had the aneurysm, she was not able to really talk. She was not able to have any movement in the left side of her body. Um, and so we have been praying. They gave, were able to give her the medicine uh, that she needed in, in, in the right time frame. And so immediately within, well, within a few hours of giving the medicine, there was, began to be a turnaround. We were praying. Uh, the medicine was doing what it needed to be doing. And I want you to know that last night, Bonnie uh, was texting thanksgiving to God for her and what he's been doing in her life. And while she's, amen. And while she is still needing prayer, praise God uh, that what, uh, what uh, could have been a much different situation on Friday now on Sunday morning, we are able to say, God, how good and mighty and healing that you are. And so we come, and I, I share those stories with us this morning because I want us to be reminded that no matter what our eyes may see, and to piggyback on what Pastor Josh shared already, no matter what our eyes may see, oh, we can always know by faith that God is working and moving. And if we will keep our eyes fixed upon him, and we will have a heart of thanks, and giving God thanks, he is always going to be found a faithful. And so this morning, I want us to be challenged by Psalm 136. Oh, that challenges us to give thanks. This psalm uh, is believed to be a psalm of a David. And when we think about this, I want us to know that this psalm was not just used by, uh, written by David, but it was used by Solomon at the dedication of the temple. It was used by Jehoshaphat before he would lead the army of the Lord into battle. And so when we really come to this moment, I want us to realize that this is not just a psalm of thanksgiving, but it is a psalm of victory. It is a psalm of celebration. It is a psalm of us being able to come this morning and say, God, we have a grateful heart. Oh, sometimes we come in, in a moment like this, in a season like this, we may say, oh, I am thankful. I am, or we'll maybe encourage someone to be thankful. But what I love in this song is the verb that is used is not to be thankful, but it literally it's telling us over and over again to give thanks. You see, it's one thing to be thankful. It's one thing, oh, to have thanksgiving on our hearts and to have a grateful heart. And it's a completely another step to make to be able to give that thanks 
to God, I want to challenge us this morning. Oh, where and how do we actually participate in the act of giving of worship and giving of thanks? Oh, we were encouraged already this morning by Tina in terms of giving of our tithe and giving of our offering. And, and that is one way that we are able to give God uh, uh, thanks and to be able to honor Him in our financial stewardship and giving. Oh, but how often do we really tell and communicate with God, Oh, Lord, I'm giving you thanks. I'm, I'm so thankful. Because if we're not careful, we get so focused on the things that are around us and the negativity that we fail to really give God thanks. And there's three things that I want to encourage us with really quickly here this morning in Psalm 136. Because it doesn't matter what else may be going on in our life. It doesn't matter how up or down things may be. We are always able to come to the point where we can give God thanks for who he is. What I love about Psalm 136 is this declaration. Oh, give thanks to the Lord uh, for he is good. That we can come this morning and we can give God thanks for who he is. Who is he this morning? Oh, he is Jehovah. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is the Lord, our provider. He is the Lord, our healer. He is the Lord, our shepherd. He is the Lord, the one oh, with the banner raised high. Who is he? Psalm 136 declares that he is the God of all gods and the Lord of all lords. And this doesn't mean that there are other uh, true gods. We don't believe in multiple gods, of course. But we notice that we understand that of anything that people make a god in their life, guess who is going to be supreme? It is always going to be Jehovah. Jehovah is greater oh, than anything else that we may make a god in our life. Oh, he is the Lord of all lords. That means that he is higher than any earthly king or queen or prince or lord or duke or any of those kinds of things. Oh, we are able to come this morning and say, God, oh, we can give you thanks because you are supreme. You are the supreme being. You are supreme in my life. You are supreme in this world. You are supreme in this nation. We get to come this morning and declare his name above all other names. We get to declare him as true God of all gods, the Lord of all lords, that he is Jehovah. He is mighty. He is supreme. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 21. I love how the Amplified Version says it. He says, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, whether angelic or human, and far above every name that is named, above every title that can be conferred, not only in this age and world, but also in the one to come. In other words, God is supreme, not just of what is now, but of whatever it may be down the road. He is Lord over everything that is, whether earthly or heavenly, angelic uh, or earthly. He is God. He is Lord. He is supreme. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 9 says, Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him, Jesus, the name which is above every other name. And so when we come to the house of God on the Sunday before Thanksgiving, oh, if nobody else oh, is able to, let us come giving thanks by giving thanks for who God is and who his character is, who his being is, that he is supreme and over all other things. Well, we can join not only the psalmist in 136 as we say, give God, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of gods for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords for his mercy endures forever. Oh, in Psalm 148, let them praise the name of the Lord for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above the heaven and the earth. And we get to come this morning and we get to participate in giving God thanks in that way. And I pray that whether it's today in church or whether it's Thursday sitting around a table with our family or whatever day you and your family may celebrate a Thanksgiving meal together, let us make sure that if nothing else, we are giving God thanks for who he is. Because who he is doesn't change based on our circumstances. Who he is doesn't become deflated when things may seem to be falling apart around us. Who he is is eternal. He is the ancient of days. And we need to give him thanks. 
not only do we need to give thanks for, to God for who He is, but we need to give thanks for what God does. There in that verse 1 of our text, give thanks to the God. Why? Give thanks to God for the, or to the Lord. Why? stop and really reflect on the goodness of God. And really stop and reflect upon who, not just who he is, but how good he has been to each and every one of us. God is truly and good and great God. I love one of the things that when we get so distracted and so focused on uh, the things that may not be going the way we want them to. One of the things, and I've shared this before, that Tina and I, uh, one of our practices is we call them Philippians 4-8 moments. Because Philippians 4-8 tells us to think about all of those things that are pure and lovely and praiseworthy and, and true and noble and loyal and, and all of those things. And he tells us to think about those things. And so there's moments when we get uh, to a, 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 a stressed out place or we get to a, a, a sad place or we get to a place where uh, that all we're being able to really see in our natural eyes is the things that we wish were different. It's in those moments that we stop and say, oh, let's give God thanks. Because why? Because we know that every good and perfect thing comes from our Heavenly Father up above. And so as we give God thanks for what He has done, oh, we'll sit around, oh, and sometimes it'll be spiritual, and we'll give God thanks. I'm thankful for... Uh, I'm thankful for redemption. I'm thankful for salvation. I'm thankful for healing. I'm thankful. And we'll, sometimes those things are spiritual, but sometimes for those things that we give God thanks for, for the things that he's done and, and given to us and how good he's been to us in our lives have nothing to do with anything that we would consider deep and spiritual. Sometimes it'll be, I thank God for a juicy, hot off the grill New York strip steak. Y'all are hungry right now. We might even say more meaningful things like, I'm thankful for the sound of laughter from the boys here. I'm thankful for the warmth of being able to just have a, a hug. Because all of a sudden, you understand the value of a hug person that you used to receive a hug from is no longer there. And so we understand God in his goodness, that he is good to us. I had to have a conversation the other day with, on the phone with someone who was really wrestling with how in the world is God would love us. Still allow for suffering and bad things to happen. I began to have a conversation about the goodness of God, even in the most dire of circumstances. That God's desire for us is that He cares for even the most smallest of details in our life. And that He sees us and what we're going through. He sees us in those emotional or mental battles. And he does not abandon us. He does not condemn us. But he stands there with his hand outstretched and saying, will you trust me? And in that middle of that moment, in the, no matter what may be burning around us, we can understand that God is not desiring uh, for uh, the necessarily, he's not desiring and, 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 and having rejoicing in us struggling in certain areas of our life. But what God is saying is allow the pain of the moment to be his megaphone, to borrow C.S. Lewis's phrase. Allow the pain of the moment to be his megaphone into our mind and heart. And for us to be able to depend upon him and to hear his call, to hear his voice, and to say, God, I can give you thanks because why? Of who you are and how good you have been to me. And even when certain things 
him being good to us doesn't mean, oh, that he gives us everything that we want and desire. Oh, but what it does mean is that he's always going to be present even when we face the disappointment. And if for no other reason, let us give God thanks this morning, no matter how high or how low we may be this holiday season, let us be able to say, God, I give you thanks because you are forever my friend and you are forever faithful to be present with me. He is good. His goodness endures forever. But not just what he does for us individually. Let's just think in a broader picture for just a moment. And what God does. And the psalmist focuses us on this. He, he continues on in, in verse 5. And I want to read for, for, uh, continue reading from our text. And, and, and we think about what it is that he's giving God thanks for. In verse 5, to him who by wisdom made the heavens. For his mercy endures forever. To him who laid out the earth above the waters, for his mercy endures forever. To him who made great lights, for his mercy endures forever. The sun to rule by day, for his mercy endures forever. The moon and the stars to rule by night, for his mercy endures forever. Oh, that was the things that God has done. God is creator. He created not just the heavens and the earth. He created the stars and the moon and the sun. And he created the beauty of the world that is around us. And if for no other reason, we can give thoughts, give God thanks because he created you and I. The people that we love, God created them. The people that we love, God so when we reflect upon, when we reflect upon what it is that God has done in our lives, all we have to do is know no further than the incredible scientific wonder that is the human body. We say, God, you made me. God, you made my family. God, you made those that are around me. You, you have created this world that I get to live in. And so, God, I give you thanks for what you've done. Third and final thing that we understand is that we give God thanks for God's forgiveness. For his mercy endures forever. As you keep reading this psalm, of course, that phrase, his mercy endures forever, continues throughout all 26 verses of this chapter. I can imagine, assuming that the scholars are correct, and this is a, a psalm of David. I wonder the first time that he read it out loud, or put it to music, and began to sing it. I wonder how many of the, there was that thought of, okay, we heard you say that line before, David. We heard you say that line before. By the time he got to the end, he said that line 26 times. 26 times. We find it significant when God says something three times. And David says, for your mercy endures forever. 26 times. His mercy, his grace covers us. It's interesting, though, the very first time that we find David using the word mercy endures forever is not Psalm 136. In fact, if you go back and you look at the first Chronicles account of when David was bringing the Ark of the Covenant back into Jerusalem. Y'all remember that story, don't you? He had recaptured the Ark from the enemy. They were bringing it back, hit a few bumps in the road, literally and figuratively, and the Ark of the Covenant is brought back into Jerusalem. And it's in the middle of that we find in 1 Chronicles chapter 16. This is David's psalm. And on that day, David first delivered this psalm into the hand of Asaph and his brethren to thank the Lord. And this is it. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. His name is above all others, remember? Make known his deeds among the peoples. Give God thanks for what he's done. Sing to him, sing songs to him. Talk of all his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. 
Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. Remember his marvelous works which he has done. His wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O seed of Israel, his servants, you children of Jacob, his chosen ones. For he is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. Remember his covenant forever. The word which he commanded for a thousand generations. Later in that same psalm in 1 Chronicles 16, he says in verse 34, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. You see, we've, the last couple of weeks, we've been, been able to join us online. We've been talking about those places that we get stuck. Two weeks ago, or two weeks ago, anyway, yeah, two weeks ago, we looked at we get stuck outside the, the veil, outside the Holy of Holies, outside the presence of God, and we get stuck thinking about or being focused on the aroma of worship rather than really encountering the presence of God. Last week, uh, we were stopped and we really reflected on how that we get, uh, we get stuck in life and that God is calling us to be able to get past and to be unstuck from the things that God is desiring to lead us to in worship and in serving Him. And, and what I want to challenge us this morning is that when we come and we understand this idea of grace and forgiveness, that God has been not only good to us, oh, but His grace, His mercy, His forgiveness, it extends. And if we will just not get stuck in the pattern of decisions, not get stuck in the pattern of what we've been dealing with, and we will press in and say, God, I need there that his grace and that his forgiveness meets us and finds us. And as the musicians come this morning, the question that I want to ask is when was the last time we were giving thanks for his grace, for his mercy, his forgiveness, for who he is, find that Jesus being led to the cross he gathered the night before together with his disciples and it was there that he began to have a very real and raw conversation with them conversations that we're able to have with God that we just are become an open book before him. He meets us where we are in all of our insecurities and in all of our doubts and all of our fears. And he meets us right there and says, I've got you. That night in that upper room, Jesus knew that what was about to happen was going to rock their world. The worst, most of the, the, the worst possible scenario in the disciples' minds was about to play out. So Jesus gathers with them. He tries to encourage them. He's very real and transparent love for them. And so this morning on this Sunday before Thanksgiving, I want us to kind of, in our own minds, take a visit back to that night, and I want us to be reflective. As you came in this morning, you should have received a communion cup. If you did not receive one, you just raise your hand and one of our ushers will bring you one. If you're watching us at home, I encourage you to you're able to, to find some juice and some bread. Because as we reflect back on that night, I 
want you to think about the emotions of what the people are going to be dealing with. Those disciples were getting ready to have every hope and dream that they had crushed. The fear, the anxiety, the uncertainty, the loss of their rabbi, the loss of their friend and their teacher, the betrayal, the hurt, one of their own, the offense that came with that, not just from Judas, but the offense that came because of their own people turning on Jesus. Savior of the world who came to love and to die for them ultimately was being crucified. When we think about those emotions, let me ask you, over the last week, how many of you have had to deal with fear, anxiety, uncertainty, betrayal, hurts, offenses? The reality is, in our own way, every single one of us are sitting around that table. Every single one of us, in our own way, are sitting around that table with Jesus standing there trying to encourage us through what we are either already experiencing or what we are about to experience. So as often as we remember that night, and as often as we remember Christ and His forgiveness, we should celebrate Him celebrate his faithfulness because as we observe and remember through communion we don't just do it because it's a sacrament or a ritual it is but that's not the we understand that it's larger than just something that's theological we understand that in the cup and in the elements of communion that we are able to not only reflect upon his coming again, but we're able to reflect upon his death. We're able to reflect upon his grace. We're able to reflect upon his hope, and we are able to reflect upon his healing. We shared earlier the needs, and specifically many of those are healing needs. His word declares what? By his stripes we are healed. That means that his healing covers uh, not just our uh, physical body, but it covers our uh, spiritual man and, and the forgiveness and the grace that we get to experience. And so if you need God's healing power in your body, in your spirit, my prayer is that you will experience a healing this morning. So as you take the wafers, you take the bread this morning, it was on the same night that Jesus was betrayed by Judas and forsaken by the other disciples that he shared a final meal of fellowship. And it was in this moment that there was this kind of declaration, this confrontation, if you would, with sin. If you're here this morning or if you're watching at home tonight, I want us to pause for a moment as we imagine ourselves sitting around that table and Jesus standing right there before us, sharing that final meal of fellowship. We are transparent fully before him. Examining us and examining our own lives. Right now I want us to pause. And if there's anything that we need to ask for that forgiveness for, then let us surrender that to the Lord and do just that. So will you just pause, every head bowed, every eye closed, and just searching our own lives and declaring and asking for forgiveness for those things that we need God's grace and his mercy. Lord, right now we just give you thanks that we can declare this morning it is your mercy that endures forever. And so this morning we give you thanks. Because God, you are 
Lord, you are great. You are good. And so, Lord, as you search our hearts, God, we cry out to you and say, God, forgive us for every impure thought. God, we ask for your forgiveness, God, in every impure action. God, we ask that, Lord, that right now that your forgiveness and grace will cover us. In the name of Jesus, as we repent and say, God, we're sorry. So we are reminded, Lord, that as you took the bread, you broke it. said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you, doing this in remembrance of me. So God, we remember your body, that God, because it was nailed to a cross, that we get to know what grace and mercy really means. So we receive that this morning in Jesus' name. Corinthians 11.25 This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. God, I thank you for your blood that was shed. A blood that was holy, pure, without blemish. And that God, that you through your shedding of blood is able to cover us in all the wrong that we've ever done. So Lord, just come and fill our lives right now. Fill our lives with that mercy and that grace as we remember and as we reflect. We celebrate you, Lord. And we celebrate that God, that it was on that cross that you gave up your life only to be able to conquer sin and death Three days later, when you emerged from that tomb, a risen, alive, and alive forevermore. And so, God, this morning we give you thanks, and we celebrate you, and we look forward to the day when you step out onto the clouds and call us home. And in the meantime, God, we just say, Lord, thank you for allowing your royal blood to flow through these lives. just stand with me this morning and just begin to give God thanks and praise. God, we just love you and we praise you, God. We exalt you and we magnify you. Oh, the Lord, just as you exited that upper room with the disciples and you began, they began to sing songs and hymns. And God, we come this morning and we declare praise to you. We declare honor into your name, God. So, Lord, we magnify you. We declare the goodness of God. We declare, God, not only who you are, but, God, we give you thanks for what you've done. And we give you thanks for your mercy and your grace. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. Just worship the Lord and give him thanks this morning.
and our living hope. That we get to come this morning and say that God, you are our hope. You are our joy. You are the one that sustains us. You are the one, oh, that equips us. You are the one, oh, that anoints us. And so, God, we just declare, God, your hope and your name above every other name. You are God. You are Lord of all lords. You are King of all kings. And that, God, we declare and give you thanks this morning. Oh, we give you thanks for the blood. We give you thanks for the cross. We give you thanks for an empty tomb this morning. And we give you thanks for the hope of knowing that you are our soon and coming King God. We love you this morning. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise this morning.